Welcome once again to Nkanyezi Visuals. Um, I've decided to call this segment Zero Five Dream. And the reason I'm doing that is once again, a focus on business people, sports people, movers and shakers within the Kimberley space, within the Northern Cape region. People are doing phenomenal things and who I believe their star is on the rise. Today with me, I've got Zama Sibinda who's the CEO of Skyjet Marketing and um, he's someone that I met in January of 2020 as I was networking with SMMEs within the, the Kimberley and Northern Cape region and the first thing that struck me about him was just a piece of marketing material that he did for uh, quite a, a big company with, within Kimberley that was actually going to use that content for China. We started a conversation and we've built a relationship since then up till this point where we are actually collaborating and working together. Zama, thank you for, for being here. Thank you for allowing me into your beautiful office space. Um, first of all, who's, who's Zama Sibinda? Hmm. Zama Sibinda, who is that? <laughs> uh, Zama Sibinda is a, is a risk taker. Hmm. Um, as a husband, as a father, um, I, I currently have two wives, which is uh, my wife and the company. <laughs> you had me there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm married to my company. I'm really married to the, my company. We fight with my company. We we have holidays together. We we, we argue. So that's my second wife. I'm looking for the third wife now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And when, when did Skyjack start? Skyjack marketing started 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, it started 2014 after I was in a business competition called the Big Break Legacy. Okay. Uh, it, it was like the apprentice of business. Okay. Uh, they shortlisted 12 entrepreneurs in South Africa and mm -hmm. it was live on SABC2 um, just a lot of channels uh, season 2 okay. the, big, the Big Rate Legacy season 2 yeah so that's when after the competition I got eliminated top 6 then I started this particular business wow yeah. and then tell me um, your, your the, 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 the structure of the, the business itself is it solely digital marketing or is it a blend? No, it's a blend. Okay. It's, it's, it's basically a marketing company okay. focusing on specific parts of the market. Like we do advertising, outdoor advertising, we do branding, web development, social media management, uh, printing. Wow. Yeah, okay. so, so that's, that's what we do. And a bit of innovation here and there. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and what got you into this business specifically? Um, you've mentioned you, you, you're a driven guy, you're a hustler. There's many things you could have chosen. Why, why marketing specifically? Uh, I studied Bcom marketing okay. I, I, in the University of the Free State. Okay. I graduated 2012. So I, I had a passion for marketing. Okay. Uh, that's one of the things that made me go into that business competition. Okay. Because the business competition, uh, they wanted uh, people who have innovative ideas that are scalable and that can employ a lot of people. Okay. So I came up with a marketing idea. It's mainly an advertising idea. It was uh, advertising on a night sky. So wow. basically, at night, everybody could see the idea. That was 20, 2014. Wow. Everybody can see if it's MTN. Everybody could see MTN. Wow. Uh, and you know what's the funny thing? Yeah. When 
Absa was relaunching. Mm -hmm. They did that. Wow. I don't know where they got it, but I can't say they took it from me. But the point <laughs> is, I had that idea. Yes. And about three years later, it was executed. Wow. So I, 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 I've been having a, a great passion for, for marketing. Uh, I love it. When I was doing assignment at school, I was like pushing. Uh, I really love being innovative and creative and marketing give you that space to be innovative wow. and creative how do you keep abreast with trends because there has obviously been an evolution in the way marketing you know um is is done in terms of business how, how have you kept abreast and remained relevant uh, I, I think it's important to always know what's going on in the industry that you are in uh, where it's moving for example uh, we also do printing which is the one of the biggest part of our business sure. uh, now you must be aware that things are moving from print to digital mm -hmm. the print is declining and digital is increasing mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm, I'm always on the lookout on where the market is going how is it going and if print is declining what is next what is going to be used mm -hmm. and I'm always looking can I be the one that's creating the solution for what is next wow. yeah. so that's where the innovation comes in sure uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm always looking at what's going on uh, planning two years from year maybe what we having won't be relevant mm -hmm. so how are we going to strategically move from the point that we have we are in to the next point uh, where the innovation will be going to or technology be going to sure that's why now we have digital one of our uh, the businesses that we have is digital marketing okay that's how now when print is dead we are doing digital wow yeah okay and then you know from my analysis as a business person as well i i find a few people still a bit stuck um, in a certain mode of, of advertising. Do you, in your approach, go to them and have a conversation with them um, and try to maybe shift their thinking to, to see that this is, this is the way to go, this is where to find people, um, and this is where they can possibly take their business to the next level? Yeah, most definitely. Most, most of our clients, I mean, that's for us, that's added value for clients. That, that's the value that we're providing for clients. Sure. So we need to educate them that, mm -hmm. listen, uh, this is where uh, people are going. Sure. Uh, and, and I'm always in the lookout for great products, for mm -hmm. people who have great products that needs uh, a certain push, marketing mm -hmm. push, whether digital or otherwise, so that we can collaborate. And once we collaborate, we can grow together. Wow. Yeah, so so I'm always constantly when we have a client or when we identify a potential client, we do go to them and uh, tell them that this is where things are going and we can provide one, two, three for you. Nice. Yeah. And, and, and on that collaboration, you identified the company that I co-own with my wife, yes. Dinelo Electations. What drew you towards us? Um, what what inspired you to get involved and to collaborate on Kinelo Electations and drive the digital marketing side of things? Uh, I think I, I I saw that the the, the product that Kinelo Electation is offering is of value sure. to a lot of people and a lot of people do not know of such products. Mm. Uh, and if they do know, maybe they might be struggling with supply. Mm -hmm. uh, so that means that you have the product and there might be a gap whereby there's you ha you having a product and people wanting a product so i wanted to close that gap hmm. and uh, just be able to give you put your product out there so that people can see it and and love it is, is it are we doing a good job by you, the way? you are i was going to say that you are doing a good job it's amazing content yeah. um you know it's it's it obviously takes time to also explain to other like you know collaborating with someone yeah. um what you as a brand espouse you know um what your philosophy is what your thinking is um, but i think over time we've we've formed a nice sort of uh, gelling um the system works well and the content is 
better than what we could have done on our own it, it, it is really really good um, and it has grown our social uh, media platforms which was obviously the the intention so yeah. kudos to you and your team nothing you doing you're doing an excellent job and just on on having a team um, managing human beings is very complex um, how do you get that right <laughs> Well, uh, I'm 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 not a I'm not a what a, a leader that micromanages. Mm. I, I prefer for for people to be managing themselves because mm. I believe that they're not here to grow me; mm. they're here to grow themselves. Mm -hmm. So if you grow yourself, I can't be uh, always micromanaging you. O obviously, here and there, I would identify challenges and I will step in. Sure. But I prefer letting people know what they're supposed to do mm -hmm. and do it. Give them the freedom to do it. Sure. And if there's a problem, then unfortunately we have to talk to HR and I'm not in HR. Mm -hmm. There's an HR company that is, uh, we, we've outsourced an HR company. We're still a small company, so we outsourced an HR company to manage any conflicts that might arise in terms of that. But I give people freedom to do whatever they they need to do. Okay. But I do oversee and make sure that it's done well. And if it's not done well, that's when I tap in and I remind somebody that, listen, you need to step in. Mm -hmm. Because if you do not step in, we're going to have problems in the business. Sure. Finances are going to go down. Mm -hmm. People are going to suffer. It mm -hmm. might be you who's going to suffer. Yeah. But yeah. now, if we grow in, then there, there is room for growth. There's mm -hmm. a reason for you to say, can we have a meeting? I'm doing one, two, three. I've, I've taken the company from this point to that point. Sure. Can I get a promotion? Mm -hmm. You understand? So I, 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 I try to explain to them that they have room to grow themselves uh, as individuals and including financial. Wow. Yeah. On that, trust is a very big thing in business. You know, not only business to business, but what you've just mentioned now. And for you to give people sort of carte blanche, you know, as your staff, how did you develop that level of trust? Was it you having to learn how to put systems in place um, that would that would protect what you're also trying to do, and and at what point do you do you trust people, as you say, to to sort of do their thing within the defined parameters that you've given? I, I think trust is a process. Uh, it's a process whereby I know what I can trust you with, mm. and as you're doing well with that trust, I give you more trust. Mm. Uh, so for me it's a process mm. uh, because I understand S same with if, if we were running a restaurant and we had uh, s s secret in ingredients <laughs> uh, I wouldn't trust anybody until I trust the person mm -hmm. so it would be a process for me to trust you with that spice mm -hmm. yeah so I give you trust and it, it's a process thing mm -hmm. and if you're not a trustful person uh, that means I will leave you with your current, uh, the, the current things that I have given you, uh, you understand? Sure. So, sure. so that means with, with you, I need to leave you here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you are, if, if you are a trustworthy person, then you will grow with that process. Okay. Because the business is, business is always developing. So there's mm -hmm. always new things. There can never be a point whereby you have came to a ceiling mm -hmm. you know, of, because there's growth. Yes, uh, there's, yes. there's, there's always growth there. Yeah. Now you mentioned to me off camera that you've, you've lived in different cities and towns, you know, um, growing up and changing schools a lot. What made you come to Kimberley specifically? Oh, that's, that's a good question. Uh, what made me to come to Kimberley? I think I noticed a gap. Uh, I've, I've, I've did my, before I came to, when I was still in varsity, mm -hmm. I did my research with Kimberley. There was a company, and it's quite a big company now, a marketing agency that started here in Kimberley. Uh, so I did my research and when the opportunity came, I started getting business the site. Okay. Then I said, no man, why do not, do not I go there? Because there's, there's no marketing companies in Kimberley. 
and there's a need. I mean, uh, Northern Cape is, is one of the big, big mining provinces. Mm -hmm and mining have marketing businesses mm -hmm. uh, departments need marketing services sure you understand but sure. now if there is no company in the city or in the province that is servicing the the departments or the mines or the private companies that means there's a gap mm -hmm. but now the question is how are you going to be able to capture those organizations or companies to give you business. Mm -hmm. And capture is a controversial word, but I, I get what you say. <laughs> yeah, in a, in a good way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so anyway, uh, I, I saw a gap. Yeah. Then I came sure. and I, I made it happen. That gap happened. I got businesses from where I wanted to get business. There's still more to be done. There's still more organizations minds that i can still tap into so there's still room and to this day there's no marketing agency or advertising agency in kimberley or northern cape so are you looking at any expansion plans beyond just kimberley beyond the northern cape yes yes <coughs> excuse me <laughs> yes well we we currently expanding to join us back um reason being we expand into Johannesburg it's it's more of a strategic uh, approach mm -hmm. we going into the digital world digital marketing digital advertising mm -hmm. and uh, now we can't say that we have monopoly mm -hmm. companies in the space mm -hmm. meaning that us and other advertising companies we starting at the same time sure so uh, regarding this type of business I, I can't be starting it or pushing it or penetrating it from Kimberley mm. although it's a digital business but it needs to go where the economy is okay yes so we're expanding to us back and uh, in the future we we hopefully before the end of the year we might open another office in the sort Lesotho, wow. Yeah. So why Lesotho and not maybe then the the, the the other big, you know, um, metropolitan cities, the Durbans, the Cape Towns, before going out? Or did you identify something unique in Lesotho? I, I think uh, at times we need to be very strategic because mm -hmm. your Durbans, even your Johannesburg and others, the mm -hmm. competition is very tight. Mm -hmm. So uh, you need to be strategic on how you can kind of go to those, those cities by building yourself. Yeah. You understand? So uh, let's say I identify that there's no digital agency in Lesotho and I'm able to do digital services for most of Lesotho companies, even uh, national, the national government. Mm -hmm then I start opening businesses in Durban. It's easier because the reference that I have, we can kind of call it international. Mm -hmm. You understand? But now opening it in Lesotho is the same as opening it in Bloemfontein, if you think about it. Sure. It just gives you that weight of it's a different uh, country. Mm -hmm. Now we have two countries. Mm -hmm. And the experience that you get from working from another country, you can acquire another country. Mm. Now we can go to Namibia. Mm. Now we can go to Botswana. Now we can go to Namibia. But the, the, the concept of just because we're already in South Africa, so there's mm -hmm. no need for us now to be from Kimberley, then we add Johannesburg, then we add Bloemfontein, then sure. we add Devon. Because sure. we're already in South Africa. That's the sure. bottom line. Sure. But we're not across the border. Mm -hmm. Because as we are a digital company, uh, digital, we can service any company in the world because mm -hmm. we service in digital we service in general electrician digital sure they've been based in Johannesburg we our, our basis is mainly in Kimberley sure and we don't really physically meet wow yeah wow. but 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 now remember sometimes you need a physical preference presence yes to be able to do uh, 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 work with that particular country mm -hmm. yes so yeah Going that big, it sounds like the sky is the limit for you guys. Um, once you become that big, yeah. will you be somewhat removing yourself from certain roles and 
maybe just still owning a percentage of your business but you know having a, a ceo and, and and you know different board appointments and that kind of thing where you kind of step back from your business or do you at some point want to sell your business um, do you see yourself in this for the next few years or decades have you have you thought about that like I said, I'm married to the business. Oh yes, yes, till so, death to us part. So that means I'm gonna, I'm gonna be selling my wife now. <laughs> so I'm not selling my wife. Yeah. Uh, so um, the business is still small. We, mm -hmm. we, we, we're quite small. I think I have a few years to run and build the business mm -hmm. to where I want it to be. Mm -hmm. So I'm not giving up any executive roles. I might as it grow to a certain level that I feel that it is where executives mm -hmm. can be added I will add executive okay but I will be driving the train okay uh, the only thing is when we expand into different countries mm -hmm. I might look at an option of maybe giving locals or a local business person who we share values mm -hmm. and vision a uh, certain percentage okay uh, so that you know countries different country the dynamics can be can be quite challenging so uh, that option would be there okay but the, i'll be driving this thing for the name stuff yeah until the wheels fall off yeah until the <laughs> no they're not gonna fall until we change the wheels yeah, sure. we innovate the wheels sure, sure, sure. until now it starts flying yeah then yeah now hi man i don't i'm not a pilot <laughs> I, was, I was a i was a train driver okay. so let me give it to a pilot you're a train driver no oh uh, okay, oh, okay. Level, <laughs> okay. not when the wheels fall but yes, when yes, now yes. we are innovative or mm -hmm. going to a bigger level then i say it's time for me to relax and, and where did that inspiration come for the name Skyject? It came from the concept I had that night uh, billboard that I had. Okay. Remember, I, I, I registered the business after the, the, that competition. Mm -hmm. So the, the main thing was a night billboard. So I thought, okay, night billboard. Then I, I thought, okay, let me name it Skyject mm -hmm. Marketing. Wow. I don't know when the jet came. Yeah, but the sky came. <laughs> the sky came. I think yes. it's limit, limitless. It's yes, sky jet. We just, we just, yeah, keep going. we just keep we just on going. There's no limit to that. No, even the sky is not the limit. <laughs> yeah, I think that's where it came from. The, okay. the sky is not the limit. So the sky, sky jet. Yeah. Okay. No dope, yeah. man. Now. Um, Obviously, COVID-19 has been exhausted as a topic, you know, but we have to ask you, how did you pivot during that time, you know, and how did you sustain yourself? Because many businesses just folded, you know, and they weren't flexible enough to, to sort of navigate the last two years. You know, I think for me, when COVID started, I, I took a deserved break. Mm -hmm. It gave me a chance to spend with my family. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is the business started growing during COVID. Wow. Uh, so the challenges were there, but they were not that, that much. It's just that after the, the first three or six months, taking a well-deserved break, mm -hmm. uh, spending time with my family, that's when... Uh, because with me, nothing stopped. Mm -hmm. Salary did not stop or salaries did not stop. Mm -hmm. Paying rent did not stop. Wow. There was no break of anything. Wow. Uh, but yeah, uh, for me, how I live, I live through risk and faith. Hmm. I, I live through those two things. I, I take risk. I'm a mm. risk taker. Mm. My life is a movie. <laughs> <laughs> My okay. life is a movie. So mm -hmm. I, I, I take risk and I'm backed by faith. Wow. Uh, that's all everything that i do mm -hmm. it's, it's i'm taking risk and yeah is that christian based faith is is, is that your it's, background yeah, I or are you in a blend it's blend it's okay. blended yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's 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 how i live my life mm -hmm. through faith mm -hmm. uh, whether i'm a christian by mm -hmm. the way whether okay. I'm christian based or i i i i've i've, I've I think I'm a late boomer Christian. Mm. So before I became a Christian, I always took faith. Everything that I did was through faith. Mm. 
yeah so i guess it's just me it's, it's, it's just me it's not really yeah it's, okay. it's, it's how i do things yeah <laughs> now on the the the, the topic of two wives yeah. i wanted to know from a legacy standpoint um have you made certain plans perhaps to have your children involved or your wife involved directly in the business um or is is that something that might still come later on uh well they are they are involved okay my my wife is involved my my wife uh is, is part of the business mm -hmm. Uh, I, I sleep next to her so she knows my stress mm -hmm. uh, she knows how she can make me feel better so I, I think she's she's part of the business and so, you, uh, but if anything were to happen to you from an operational standpoint yeah. and that, that would she be able yeah. to yeah she would take the business over she would she okay would take it over okay. it's not dying because if god forbid i was to die tomorrow mm -hmm. skyjack marketing is not gonna die wow uh because the, the decisions i make uh, i consult her mm -hmm. so she knows my vision wow. uh, she's part of every major decision that i make wow i don't just do anything without her knowing that's good mm. that's good no i think that's powerful because and, and i raise that because i've just heard so many shocking stories of you know people running businesses and you know their wives then or their children not knowing how to continue or sustain that legacy but i think you've you've said something powerful there yeah, yeah, but but i don't think it's easy for uh for a person whether children or not mm -hmm. if they're not physically part of the business they can't just yeah come in or, yeah come in and, mm -hmm. and run the business mm -hmm. but now if if there's a system within the business that people in the business know what to do precisely then there's a certain thing that is needed to be done remotely mm -hmm. by let's say in this case a wife mm -hmm. but my aim of the business is not to have a business that would be like that whereby now i pass away my wife goes in mm -hmm. i want it to be in a level where board comes in mm -hmm. you understand mm -hmm. i want to build a business that is not sibinda's business mm -hmm. you understand mm -hmm. yeah that, that that's the 10 years 15 years from now yes i want it to be run like that that's good. so so that if my kids do not want to be part of the business they will benefit financially sure from the business and do whatever that they would want to do mm -hmm. but not for them now to now start selling the business if there's a fleet start selling the fleet yeah if there's office buildings start cashing the business, in cashing in yeah and all of that mm -hmm. so for me that's where i would love the business to go to mm -hmm. yeah no that's that's but, but not not to be dependent upon my wife or my kids okay I, I don't want i don't want that i think it it also doesn't make sense yeah but now at the current situation if i was to die tomorrow my wife will take over no that's great um this office has undergone a beautiful revamp um I, I i love it i love the look the feel you know the open air kind of you know open plan setting um is there any sort of inspiration from a design standpoint that came into this um or did you again in your style of leadership give someone free reign to kind of just do their own thing um it was done by i i got ladies interior designer ladies to do it okay but i guided them in terms of the style that i want okay i always loved the class style you see when you see in the movies yes what is this lawyer guy <laughs> um the canadian suits Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah your office your, your glass field whereby you have office where you can see what's going on outside and people from outside can see you see so so this the, the i i i think it was inspired by me but mm -hmm. i i hired people to do it oh that's wonderful is there is there any like breakout story you have like a uh, any business that you worked with or did digital marketing for um that really took off and went massive that you are allowed to or want to talk about 
<laughs> the one that I have, I can't talk about now. Okay. Yeah, I can't do this poppy egg things. I, I can't talk about okay. it because it was more of a disclosure type of a thing. Okay. So, but I can talk about Kinele <laughs> Lake <laughs> Okay. Yeah, what, what, yeah. what do you want to talk about in terms of no, Kinele Lake I, I think I think it's the right space because you, the one of the owners is here. Sure. Um, I think. <clears throat> It, 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 it boomed. I think mm -hmm. we, 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 we took you guys from a certain level. What I promised you mm -hmm. we will do, I think we have done it. Mm -hmm. And I think you are the one that is more more able to say what we have done for you <laughs> than sure. me. Yeah. Sure. No, I mean, people can, can, can check out the socials. I'll just uh, drop it in, in, in <coughs> the comment section. Yeah. Um, and then they can have a look at it. You said you have a lot of stories to tell. I'm interested yeah. in that. What what wisdom is there that you can give? Um, and maybe before you go there, did you have any form of mentorship along the way in your business journey? Yeah, I've I've, I've had I've had a mentor before, <laughs> but my mentor kind of disappeared on me. Oh wow! Uh, How come? But, but, I, I don't know, I mean, mm -hmm. maybe he was too busy. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, 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 do I have a mentor? I, I think I, I, I get in inspired by a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, I get inspired by what people are achieving, mm -hmm. uh, especially black people. Mm. Uh, when I see somebody going into the space where it is mainly a, a white space mm -hmm. and succeeding mm -hmm. I, I get really inspired from that so i think my more of my uh, people that mentor me are people who are doing well black people who are doing mm -hmm. well who, who, who are not just uh, focusing on their babies mm -hmm. And they are families, sure. but focusing on building other people and 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 just doing <coughs> being being part of helping people. Okay. Yeah, but at the moment, I don't I don't really have a mentor. I have people that I call now and then mm -hmm. when I need certain advice, when when I I need things to be done. Yeah. So on the question of value. Um, I want to ask you, you know, we've collaborated as two black owned businesses um, and, and the partnership has been good. What can the broader black business community do better or what is it not doing that you'd like to see, you know, the black business community doing? Yeah, I, I think uh, black businesses needs to work more on consistency. Hmm. In, 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 in most cases, black people start businesses and they're excited. After they start doing the real work, they, they sleep or, hmm. uh, or, or, or they sit down. Uh, then an opportunity comes, then they, they start again. Sure. Then when that opportunity is gone, then you understand. So we need to be more consistent in uh, starting planning, starting, and just scaling. Mm -hmm. No matter how small we are, because I, recently I've, I've learned the importance of starting small. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, here's the thing, you can be selling archer, mm. right? You borrow from your parents thousand rand, you buy archer 10 or, or, or whatever it is, nice archer. Then you, you put it in containers, about 20 of it, you sell it, mm -hmm. you make maybe 500 from it, mm -hmm. you put 250 in the bank, you, 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 you're that consistent. On a daily basis, you're in that consistent. After six months now, you're selling about six about 1,000 uh, containers. Then from 1,000 containers, because you have been working with a bank, you have mm -hmm. been taking your money to the bank, mm -hmm. the bank might give you additional 10,000. Mm -hmm. Then you go more, 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 more. Then later on, after two to three years, because two to three years is just now. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 <laughs> it's just now, my man. So so after three years now, maybe you have a truck. Mm -hmm. You're negotiating with pick and pay, mm -hmm. with spa. You, mm -hmm. you understand? Mm -hmm. That's the basic of just starting small, working with a bank. Mm -hmm. Because 
uh, the, the, the I don't know if I'm I'm saying it right, but the white people, mm -hmm. one of their reason for being successful mm -hmm. is they work with a bank. Mm. You understand? Mm. If you work with a bank and things become difficult, you go to the bank and mm. the bank works with you. So it's one of the things that I saw on a later. I'm, I'm more of a big person. I want big big things. Mm -hmm. But now I've I've seen the importance of just starting small starting small where you are with what you have with what you have sure with what you have you you'll gradually grow true that, that's when i mean uh, I'm, i i was always amazed by how actually in kimberley there's a cake company muffin cake company okay they are in all the malls in all the shopping centers sure how do you afford to be paying rent there mm -hmm. and selling muffins mm -hmm. it's all because of consistency mm. and if you're consistent you don't lose clients yeah, if you're not a consistent you're definitely going to lose clients definitely so there's important inconsistency and starting small mm -hmm. once 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 we can do that as uh, young small black companies I'm telling you, we'll start giving them pressure there with the products that we have by your pick and pays and what. But we're not giving them that pressure. Sure. Because now you end up having association that targets going into pick and pays and shop right. Mm -hmm. But because now it will be one person, it will be push I am fighting alone. Mm -hmm. Going nobody we don't know that push I am is trying to go like example, I'm just making an example. Sure. Trying to go into pick and pay. Mm -hmm. But because she's fighting alone, mm. it's it becomes too difficult. But if there's ten push M's at the same time mm -hmm. fighting to get into uh, uh, pick and pay. Mm -hmm. I mean pick and pay will have that pressure. Sure. Because unfortunately with us business people our news is not nice it's not uh, famous or popular news mm. so it does not get a lot of attention yes compared to like your service delivery and your other things mm. Mm. then we don't have power in mm. that, and we're not collaborating with each other mm. to be going into the market that we need to go into do you think this is a positive step in that direction which one this this itself this interview because you're mentioning media and this is a form of it, it's a it's a it's an important step because we need to give out our information out there we need to be sharing True. information because there's a lot of people that are rich mm -hmm. have made it they've mm -hmm. been through a lot they know the system they know how to be successful mm -hmm. it's not only about money to be successful but it is about small things like your consist being consistent starting from small working with a bank mm. if we can get people that can tell us i got rich and or or, or, or or this is how i got successful this are the system that you need to apply mm -hmm. to get successful then we're going into the right direction you so think, yeah. sorry you mentioned banks I, I like that that topic because we're talking about black businesses here and there's this sort of perception that you hear a lot yeah. um, others would say it's been their lived experience that there are some forms of discriminatory practices within banks you know in terms of interest rates in terms of approval of loans and funding and things like that um, do you think that's too broad a statement to make or do you think it's nuanced it could have been a racist manager at one branch and maybe then try your luck in a different city or build relationships elsewhere within the same bank and maybe you can still achieve what you intended to initially uh, I think um, power talks if you have money you are able to negotiate with a bank mm -hmm. If you do not have money, you can negotiate with a bank. Mm. If you have 100 million and you want to borrow 100 million and you have assets of 200 million and uh, a certain bank says they're offering you this percentage, then you say uh, you have bargaining power to say mm. that I'll go to another bank. Because mm. of the power that you have with what you have, mm -hmm. you have power to negotiate. Mm -hmm. So uh, the the 
discriminatory thing I'll, I'll for now i'll put it on the side mm -hmm. uh, but i think the important thing is for us to know how the banks works because at the now age banks are systematic mm -hmm. they just uh, put in your id then a system just gives out information that yes you are approved or you're not approved mm -hmm. but uh, it's just that unfortunately for us black people we are more disadvantaged in working with the bank because we do not have collateral to give in sure we 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 we, we when business struggles we get to a point whereby we let's say we default on a certain thing for a month because now business which is given mm -hmm. all business goes in through up and down sure you you default then three months later you go to the bank can i have a loan mm -hmm. because you've defaulted and you did not have anywhere to go yeah. to prevent the the, the 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 defaulting in a certain thing mm -hmm. then you you lose mm -hmm. you understand because i think again the political power that we have in the country it's 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 it's, it's against us because as i'm saying what i'm saying now mm -hmm. then we have a COVID crisis mm -hmm. then the money 200 or 500 million goes to the banks from mm -hmm. government for mm -hmm. relief mm -hmm. how many black people have benefited there mm -hmm. the minority have benefited percentage wise have benefited more wow. than black people mm -hmm. but now how does government when i am and i have a basis that i'm hiring people here are the people that i have mm -hmm. but i defaulted in my insurance or whatever last month so the bank is a no-no for them to give me the loan mm -hmm. now how, how 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 does that make sense sure you understand sure how 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 it, it is making it difficult for us to survive mm -hmm. and uh, move forward although we should not be feeling entitled that we need to be boosted by 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 by, by government mm -hmm. but bottom line is that we are dis dis disadvantaged mm -hmm. we are disadvantaged hence we don't have collateral to give into the bank mm -hmm. and say that uh, i have one two three my father left me with one two three our fathers and mothers are leaving us with nothing sure because they had nothing you sure. understand sure some people's mothers and fathers are giving them something because they had a lot of time mm -hmm. to be building in that those type of things mm -hmm. so so also I, I i really have a problem with the the, the political will also in terms of our government but i think that's an uh, that's a topic for another day sure uh, let me, let's focus <laughs> yeah. on me let's focus on yeah. yeah no so you you're a guy from Taung, yes. um and I'm, I'm, I'm quite interested in what, what makes you a risk taker, what made you bold and say, no, I'm going for it, you know, you, you went on TV, um, you put yourself out there, you're willing to take risks and, you know, you're servicing quite big businesses, um, you've got quite a lot of clients, you're doing well, you know, um, what, what inspires you because, you know, it's a small place you come from, Kimberley is also a small place, um, but what what makes what gives Zama that that chutzpah as the Jews would I'm, say? I, I, I've always been a dreamer. I yeah. grew up from a, 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 my mother and my dad were in business mm -hmm. uh, from a small age mm. we were in business. So wow. we, we had a supermarket, no man, a fruit and veg. We had a lot of fruit and veg. Wow. So I I always in like my my father used to inspire me a lot mm. with with his his businesses so when i was young i i think years where my risk taking comes from when i was young i wanted i always told my parents i'm going to be the richest man in the world wow but then, <laughs> when you grow up then <laughs> reality hits you yes yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see so i guess my risk taking taking come from the ambition or the yeah the ambition that i have in terms of when I was young, I wanted to be the richest person in the, in the world. world. So at least before I die or when I die, mm -hmm. I must at least my top 10 South Africa. Oh, cheers. You understand? Cheers. Or top cheers. five. <laughs> so I guess that's what's pushing me mm -hmm. to just like push harder mm -hmm. to, if not, get the entire goal of being the richest person in the world. Mm -hmm. Because the, a growing up is a scare, my man. It is. Now you growing up, you are want to be a richest person. <laughs> Then you the challenges <laughs> then you, you see, so 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 i guess uh it's it's just that mm -hmm. the goals that i have that are pushing me to just take risks wow and either way uh 
I do not want when I'm 50 to say when I my I can't run anymore to say I could be doing this mm -hmm. when I was 80. Sure, I could be running like this. I sure. want to say I ran mm -hmm. and I ran a good race. Mm -hmm. I fell, I I stood, and yeah, I am. Oh man, that's uh, so because for me it's not negotiable. Mm -hmm. When I'm 50, uh, like I I I think I will be one of the people in South Africa that are influential. You already uh, are. You already are, man. <laughs> you must just not be so camera shy. Get on those cameras, put yourself out there, you know. Yeah, maybe I should start doing that. <laughs> you I were should, on camera anyway. That, yeah. And I think uh, lastly, or you know, how do people then who didn't have your kind of background, who had a father who was in business where risk taking was a norm, and encouraged how do they break out of their mold um, because I see a lot of orthodoxy in people's thinking um, and I was also a victim of that at some point in my life and I broke away and completely went the the unorthodox route which yielded more results how do other black and, and, and when I say black I include colored people in that conversation you know in terms of what has been done to our mindsets and, and mentality how do they break out of that well, <laughs> I mean I think I think they, they are the ones that should know that but I, I think I think uh, to achieve whatever you want to achieve it depends on you you cannot be motivated to to do something and hey, that's a difficult question my man mm. but but it's more of a personal thing probably yeah, it's more for me it's more of a personal thing yeah. that's why for me at work i do not want to force somebody to do anything mm. as long as you know what you need to do but if you're not performing unfortunately we need to apply the hr rule mm -hmm. you understand mm -hmm. so for me it's 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 more of Anything that is developmental, it comes from from uh, a person. Mm -hmm. uh, you choose to to be motivated by a certain content, mm -hmm. and certain content not motivate you. You understand? And I can never know what content can push you because if you say that mm -hmm. I don't want to go into business because I saw how my father or my mother suffered. Mm how am i going to convince you that but with you it will be fine you're yeah. the next generation mm. you need to decide that you are the next generation sure you understand sure. you need to know what motivates you and mm -hmm. take it from there sure if you don't want to go into business don't go into business sure go wherever you think but just try to make a difference go wherever you think you can make a difference wow. and i think the important thing in in as in life as we live we must just be motivated by what we think makes a difference mm -hmm. what what i as an individual can make a difference can mm -hmm. me um, cleaning somebody's yard make a difference let's say i'm employed mm -hmm. will, will will clean somebody's uh, uh, grain's yard make a difference mm -hmm. if yes do it because that that difference that you're doing can change your life sure you can now be servicing your whole community in terms of gardening because mm -hmm. now i'm talking about gardening sure so following your your passion and what you think can make not money mm. what you think can make a difference can turn out a value addition yeah is there anything you want to do in town like from um a business giving perspective or, or business yeah or giving back or empowering is there anything you want to do or have done uh, yes, there, there is uh, things that I want to do. My, my mother is in business. I'm, I'm assisting her in terms of her business. My brother is also in business. They both in town, so I do assist them. But yes, I do have a vision of having a business in town okay. that will also make a difference in terms of feeding the community mm -hmm. in town mm -hmm. so most definitely that's actually in the pipeline okay you know, of things that i want to do uh, as soon as possible 
I'm going to ask you to give me a quick critique. Um, yeah. I started the Northern Cape Business Information Center yeah. um, in 2020, January, bringing SMMEs together from around the province, stimulating trade amongst them, goods and services, knowledge um, from all over, Kuruman, Kimberley, as far as Kakamas, you know. Um, how can that platform maybe be something better if we reinstate it? Because I did sort of this year decide I'm I'm stepping back from that. I think I think uh, that was the bad decision that you've made. Mm -hmm. the, that was the most bad. I I just didn't wanna bother you. Yeah. Because <laughs> I know you can be too personal. So I mean, having such people, mm. having that form of database, mm. that's power. Mm. Because remember how we collaborated. Sure. Because I saw something, then I saw power. Mm. We don't need to talk mm. for you to see that we're together. Mm. But we see. Mm. And there, there might be, uh, in such a thing, you might see, uh, or, or maybe there might be, let's say, for example, uh, we have somebody that has power in pick and pay. Mm -hmm. who's part of the group right mm -hmm. or who's an entrepreneur then you cut that person then after cutting that person who has a distribution power mm -hmm. but he's not talking because there's no need for me to, to be to be talking mm -hmm. at that particular moment then you cut that person then you post from the people that you 500 people that you've left then you post whatever you post you missed the opportunity sure. of a distribution sure uh, but we, we lack that community mm. we, we have bigger social communities but in terms of business communities we let them mm. and as long as we have them there would be a time that we would be working together mm -hmm. we don't need to be working together now mm -hmm. but in the future as long as we're consistent sure that's the thing about you that you're very consistent sure it's just that well that's fine <laughs> I was like, this dude is removing us now. Uh, like he doesn't understand that sure. now and then people will be inboxing each other, mm. which is the bigger thing that you are giving back. And you know what? What that will do to you? Mm -hmm. It will because it's the passion that you're doing. It will give you bigger things. Sure, you understand. Sure, because now you're making people work together. Some people are, and you don't know. Some people are inboxing, but they're not forgetting you because you have been the main person that that has been for sure you know everybody in that, sure. in that group sure you understand sure. but now you being that personal sometimes you like hey um, do i really want to work this <laughs> personal. because business you're not personal mm. we can fight now mm -hmm. but if we mature tomorrow we find we wake up i right, let's do the business yesterday sure. was yesterday things. sure it's fine it happens sure let's let's now move on no i i hear you um and I, I fully concede, you know, and that's why I put myself, in fact, um, you know, in the spotlight now, you know. Um, it's the first time I'm asking you about the formation of Northern Cape Business Information Center and I'm, it wasn't part of my plans today, but it, it, it came to mind. Um, I think at times we do grow as individuals. We do grow as business people. We see our shortcomings. We, it's good to hold up a mirror. Um, and I think sometimes we want to see that interaction in our groups. And like you're saying, the people who are inboxing each other, are they coming back to the person who started this thing to be like, you know what, I just closed the 20,000 Rand deal. Or we just, um, you know, exchange goods with 5,000 Rand or 10,000 Rand so that the administrator or the person doing that knows that they are making a difference and the group is of value to people. So I think it somewhat goes both ways. You know, it then gives me the, the task and I feel that I still have all of your contacts. So I've not removed people or chased people away. I still have very good relationships with everyone but what I'm thinking of is this maybe gives me a bit of time to say how do I restructure what I initially put into place because it was just a whatsapp group and grabbing and putting people together you know um, but how do I build something that is cost effective and efficient in tracking these kind of things you know, and having a reporting system that is quick, that is easy to use, and that I can build data on that says, 
the Northern Cape BIC has achieved X, Y, and Z. This has been the results. We've traded so much. So much has been traded in goods and services. Um, and this is the kind of response or feedback, you know, that we got from participants. And also maybe allowing um, a bit of a revolving door to say, okay, it's not a casting out of people out of a space. But if they maybe feel, hey, dude, for mental health reasons, I need a, two weeks away from business and things like that, then I believe it, it, it then doesn't form that image of antagonism in any way, you know, because there's a lot of perception around digital communication that the in-person contact or phone call can bridge because then we're not misunderstanding tone or any actions that are you know you know done so thank you for that critique and you're not the only person and i see something yeah uh collaboration is important sure uh working on a certain business model mm -hmm. would have helped mm. because what what you had or have mm -hmm. it's, it's power it's data sure Businesses want data, mm -hmm. especially those type of data because it, uh, business communities are scarce. Mm -hmm. SAB Kickstart, oh, you know SAB Kickstart, yes, yes. might say that we're looking for entrepreneurs mm -hmm. in in Northern Cape mm -hmm. because we're not getting them. Mm -hmm. NEF might say that we're not getting our loans out. Sure. IDC might say this. Mm -hmm. This ones might say that. Mm -hmm. uh, Northern Key Provincial Government might say that, w or, or Economic Development. Where can we find entrepreneurs that can access the fundings that we have? Mm -hmm. You understand through business model. Mm -hmm. You don't need to hear all the successful stories, mm -hmm. but those successful stories end up building the business model. Mm -hmm. you, you end up creating a website or something whereby sure. it is a hub mm, mm. Where when SAB, NEF, whatever they want, they come to you mm -hmm. and what do they do? They buy it mm. through advertising in the platform, Definitely. in your digital platform that you have. Mm -hmm. But now starting point without a huge capital is through collaboration Exactly. because you have camera people that are there, mm -hmm. you have designers that are there, mm -hmm. you have whatever that the, 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 the people that you need to collaborate to make this thing mm -hmm. successful and already you have the data mm -hmm. of people of potential subscribers mm. I mean if I see something of such value mm. uh, uh, whereby because that's what you are doing yes NEF yes or whatever yes this yes the blended fund yes this yes mm. this you are important to follow if you as as, as far as I was so silent mm. if you open a website do you think I won't follow you I'm, or, or subscribe to that website that, that is so content relevant to me sure I'm going to follow sure but I'm not a talker. Mm. I talk when I need to talk. Mm. You understand? I will follow. And I have now what you have 1.5 database. That's power mm. to sell to SAB Kickstart. Sure. And say that I have 500 farmers, 300 farmers. Mm. That's power to sell to NEF. I have people that are willing to do manufacturing, whatever. Mm -hmm. You understand that the, the business, that's where the business model comes. Now that you've created the database of these people, mm -hmm. now you go to all these agencies, mm -hmm. organization and say that you're looking for this. Mm -hmm. Yes, this, and I'm selling it with this much. Wow. And obviously through Poppy at hence I'm saying that you can sell it through uh, advertising and giving out information and what. There was a time as a particular organization, they just wanted to do a, 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 an, another organization, mm -hmm. let's say a service provider. Mm -hmm. They just needed registered entrepreneurs that were part of that thing. Mm. That's all. They mm -hmm. made a lot of money just going around and filling in register. I don't know if they, if they were ever came. I don't want to mention <laughs> sure. if they ever came here. Mm -hmm. But the power that the, the, the organization just needed subscribers. Mm -hmm. Give us a list. Go wherever you go. How much you want? This much? Okay, I'll give you this much. Mm -hmm. Go. I want target 100. And their target was too, too low. Mm -hmm. Give us at least 100 or 50. Mm -hmm. Every city that you go to, you understand mm -hmm. the power that you have. Sure. 
so building it that way by mm. saying okay i let me keep these people as calm as possible and let's just move to creating a business model yeah let's yeah. say some people know how to do business model can we consult exactly uh, can you assist me with creating a digital business model for this type of of thing yeah yeah, yeah. no i think I've, I've 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 benefited um i mean in that brief chat we've just had yeah a lot came out in terms of ideas that you've given and, and, and thought that I've, that I've put in, you know, again, because going back to even 2015, you know, I had the, the idea of starting um, something for black owned businesses, a portal that would grow city by city, province, Africa, the world, you know, and this would become like a global thing where businesses pay a small fee to be on and that sort of sustains the platform and traveling around and all of that. But I think it, it re-energizes that dream and idea I've had because yeah. I see people doing something similar, you know, um, apps mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. and, and, and places where they're bringing businesses together. But um, like I said, the my love for Kimberley, my love for the, the province and uplifting and getting people to talk um, outside of the dependence on political parties and the, the broken political system to see that we are each other's you know, keepers and each other's solutions um, is, is definitely important. So thank you uh, for that. I will definitely um, put shoulder to the wheel and reimagine that Mm. And, 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 you know, uh, re-energize how I go about that because I think um, that could be impactful. And um, I just wanted to say to you as well, thank you for your time today. Um, and, and thank you for opening your heart up to, to me, to us, for allowing us into your, your office, beautiful office space. And thank you for the collaboration. You know, from the bottom of my heart, you called me one morning you saw the value in what we were doing and it came at a perfect time because we couldn't keep up with all of the the digital content we needed to create ourselves and um i did have a chat with my wife so we are looking at extending you know our our contractual um relationship with you and we want to see how far we can we can take this with Skyject. Um, and also just congratulations on your business journey. In two years time, I hope I'll be part of a 10 year celebration somewhere. Um, it takes courage. I know myself that there are times maybe you've doubted yourself, um, or wanted to give up, but um, I've gotten to see a different side of you. You know, the risk taker. Um, I've gotten to see a bit about your personality that I didn't see before, you know. So um, I'm really proud of you. Um, and yes, from a black man to a black man who's also a husband, who's also a father, you do inspire me. Um, and I'm sure you inspire many other young people, um, black people all over the world, people of all races probably. Um, so keep it up. And I wish you nothing more than just bigger success Skyjack, the sky's the limit, and man. Money. And money. And money. <laughs> it's all about the, the Benjamin. So, yeah. you know, is there anything else you want to say, Zama? No, no, my man. Um, anyway, I think the important thing then, eh, mm -hmm. what are, we, we also have something similar that we want to do, but mm -hmm. the thing that I think can be very, very successful in executing such an, a community mm -hmm. is collaboration. Sure. A, a well thought of collaboration that has paperwork in because for us from our side maybe it's more of creativity part mm -hmm. in terms of how to attract and how to maintain or whatever the case mm -hmm. yours might be how to acquire mm -hmm. the people and maintain them mm -hmm. somebody else might be one two three mm -hmm. so if if there is a legal document to such a collaboration sure I'm telling you, it, it will be big. Sure. It, because we need that community. If people are encouraged to go into entrepreneurship. There's no businesses, any, uh, there's no jobs anymore. Mm. So 
the community that it's important and mm. the important thing about our community is that we lack information mm. information is so powerful yes we need money mm. we need cash flow but there is nothing so important as information mm. looking for money can make you desperate and do stupid things sure but with information it's protecting you from doing stupid things mm. you understand so we're lacking that environment of people that have been through it mm. saying that listen you don't need to go borrow money mm -hmm. you don't need a loan shark mm -hmm. you can do it in this way yeah you can do it in that way sure. I, I recently there's something that I I, 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 I I so want to buy and I'm not able to buy it but thinking strategically I put in something in the table with the offer and I thought like yo Ah, that is a strategic move. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. One of my books, I will be saying that I did this. And sure. people will say, what? Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Creative finance, yeah. man. We, yeah. we, we need to have a community where we just have access to, mentor, to mentors through them just sharing content. Mm. Not us asking. Sure. But through them just randomly sharing content. Mm. There's nothing to lose. They're already there, man. Mm. Mm. Uh, and even those who are... For me, I like giving information. I like... Mm. I, I, I so... I would never keep information from a person. Mm. Uh, it doesn't help. Exactly. Unless you are my direct, direct competitor and we, we, we're competing for a particular client. Sure. Then we'll talk afterwards. Sure. After the bidding and all <laughs> <laughs> and we'll talk but i'll never i'll never not share information and it's important it is yeah it because is. my success it's it's another man's success tomorrow i fall i i shared information with somebody you understand how, how it is it's ecosystemic it's, yeah yeah so we need we need to create that environment sure i call it a entrepreneurial cultural environment we need to have that and we lack that in Kimberley Northern Cape mm. uh, I when I was in Bloemfontein mm -hmm. they had that mm. and they were working with also government okay so here yeah, we don't we don't have that because government doesn't know anything about entrepreneurship businesses mm. yeah so if they're taking a loan they, they just doing their own thing mm -hmm. and wasting you understand? Yeah. so if they involve us mm. we will assist them to achieve their goals and to understand yeah. how they can better drive their budgets yeah. and goals yeah okay now uh guys i think we 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 busy with the revolution right now um as you've seen just out of a conversation alone out of an interview i don't think any of us planned this morning that you know something that i'd let go of would then be uh, revived once again but um Thank you to all our loyal viewers, all our loyal subscribers, those who like. Please do comment, please do share, um, and please spread this uh, information far and wide. Um, I think uh, from a personal standpoint, you, you cannot sustain any civilization or any economic revolution if it's not based on a cultural revolution. So I think this is important as we are going forward, defining ourselves as young people, defining ourselves as, as black people as colored people as South Africans um, as we going through understanding our identity and that you know we need to boldly stake our claim in this world so thank you once again to the team at Skyject thank you Zama you know thank you to our wonderful photographer Mr. Donovan Jacobs our videographer um, who's been patient and who's put in you know the work to make this look as amazing as it does and uh, I'm hoping that I'll be able to further grow this uh, section on my channel um, that I've just decided this morning to call uh, 05 dream which comes from the area code 053 so yes guys um, Zama has just uh, kicked my butt a little bit there. I will be definitely reviving the Northern Cape BIC, but reimagining it. And um, yes, man, let's win, let's make money, and let's build this beautiful country of ours. Thank you. My name is Kinelo Khoyeman. I am a qualified data scientist and I currently work in corporate. I am originally from Kimberley, uh, but I'm currently stay in Gorepoort, Gauteng. So, Kinelo Lactations 
um, is the business that we have started, myself and my husband. How this started was background. I am a new mom, first time mom, young enough to not know everything, obviously. So in the beginning of my, um, just after birth, I started experiencing one of the most prevalent issues and challenges that mothers, new mothers face. This would be a decline in breast milk production. So it took weeks to actually find a solution. It took extensive research, sleepless nights, absolute depression, crying, screaming most of the time. <laughs> um, but eventually we did find a solution. So the solution is lactation cookies. After a few months of research into how these cookies work, if they are safe for mothers, breastfeeding mothers, pregnant mothers, and literally everyone, yes, everyone can eat lactation cookies. Um, we decided to open a business because this is an absolute issue in South Africa. There's not a lot of people that offer this kind of product, so we decided to go into this. Market was absolutely amazing and the need was definitely there. So we started like Kinelo Lactations last year in November 2021 and currently we've been in business for six months. In six months we've reached over 400 mothers all across the country, all nine provinces in South Africa. We do also offer a freemium model where we offer education for free. Every single Sunday we have Instagram, Facebook lives where we teach mothers about everything from motherhood, babyhood, parenthood and we try our best to include each and everyone in this process education is at the forefront of our business breastfeeding has become a very important topic hot topic so so to speak the one problem is though there's a lot of awareness but there's not much education so that is what we are trying to achieve at Ginilo Lactations. Thank you so much it's been absolutely humbling and amazing I'm doing this I actually feel that this is my calling and we're here to stay thank you so that's it from me happy pumping